Hello, everyone, and welcome to Candid Learning in a Nutshell. In this quick 30-minute session, you'll learn how you can use the educational resources on Candid Learning to answer your most commonly asked questions. My name is Melissa Pulis, and I'm a senior liaison for Candid's support team, and I lead Candid's online librarian service. I'll be co-presenting today with my colleague, Christy Roulette, who works on the online librarian team with me. We both use the resources on Candid Learning all day, every day. So we're gonna tap into our expertise on the site and hopefully we can teach you how you too can make the most of the site. So we'll be going over a lot of resources today, starting out with what is Candid Learning and how you can navigate the website. Then we'll be going in a little bit deeper dives into the main educational resources on the site which are our nonprofit startup resources, our knowledge base articles, the sample documents section, our ebook collection, and I'll spend a little bit of time telling you more about the online librarian service. At the end, we'll have about 15 minutes for questions. Um, you could send your questions in the chat box or you could save your questions till the end and we'll go over them live. So the outcomes for today's session are really very simple. We want you to discover some new tools and resources to answer the questions that you probably get day in and day out. We also want you to learn how to navigate the site and easily find the resources that we're gonna show you today. And one last thing before I jump right in and get started, Christy and I are gonna go over a lot of resources, but there's no need for you to take notes. All of the resources we're gonna go over today are included in the resource list that we've provided with this session. And there will be a link to the resource list in the chat window so you can easily access it. So right now I wanna exit out of my PowerPoint and I wanna go into Candid Learning and show you the site and do a screen share this way. So what is Candid Learning? It's really very simple, Candid Learning is Candid's educational website. It's where we house all of our trainings and all of the educational materials that we have that can be shared with the public or anybody working for a nonprofit or wanting to learn about nonprofits. This is one-stop shopping for them where they can go to find all of our resources to help. So Candid Learning, how to navigate it. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time navigating because we're all information professionals here, but I will say this, as long as you keep into the navigational tabs across the top here, you're gonna be in good shape because everything stems off from there. Christy and I are gonna spend most of the presentation today going over the resources and the Ask Us tabs, but there's some other tabs I just kinda of wanna quickly gloss over so you know what's under them. First, we have a training tab here. And when you hover over that, you'll, you'll see it's pretty standard website. You'll get a drop down with more options. So under the training, you'll see you can access our live online webinars, our regional specific trainings. You can link to our master training calendar from here. You'll also be able to access our on-demand self-paced learning courses and our videos and podcasts. We have a section for anyone who's interested in custom training for groups. They can visit our site here and learn more about that option and submit an inquiry form. And if you wanna see a list of all of our trainings or standard courses, you can find them from this tab as well. There's also a topics tab where if you wanted to limit the site content by a specific topic, such as fundraising or proposal writing, management, whatever. You, I'm sure you can go through and read these yourself, um, but we have a number of different topics that you can browse by as well. Over here on the right side, there's a Find Us link, and this is where there'll be a searchable map of all of our FIN locations across the country. Obviously, you probably have a lot of re, you know, people who visit your FIN live in your area, but just in case, you know, you do get a patron or a visitor who comes to your FIN who's either from another area or maybe helping a colleague in another state, you can use this tool to find their nearest FIN. Now, most of the resources on Candid Learning are free. Um, some do have a fee, such as some of our fee-based classes, but there'll be a price mark if there is a fee associated. 
But there is uh, one caveat. Some of the resources on Candid Learning do require that you uh, have a login to the site. Um, if a person doesn't have an account or a login, there's a yellow join button here in the upper right that they can just click. It's a quick 30 second form that they can fill out to create a Candid Learning account. And once that you have an account, you can log in here using the login button. And so that's pretty much it. So next I'm gonna jump right in and I'm gonna show you under the resources tab, one of the first uh, educational resources Christy and I are gonna show you today. And I'm gonna start off with the nonprofit startup resources. So usually this is one of our most frequently asked questions. And I'm guessing it's probably a frequently asked questions for the Finns as well. A lot of people come to us because they're either thinking of starting a nonprofit or they're just starting out and they need some resources to help them move to the next level. Now, we typically have people start with our free training that's called Starting a Nonprofit Right for You, which again is av available under this training section here on the website. And if they take that as starting nonprofit profit right for you, which does exactly what the title says, it helps people decide whether that's the right course of action uh, for themselves. And if they take that and then they think, yeah, you know, I'm going to move in that direction or I'm getting more serious about it. Usually the next step that we recommend is that they take this nonprofit startup assessment tool. Now, this is a free diagnostic tool that anyone can take. But as I mentioned, they will need a Candid Learning account to take this. So once you set up your Candid Learning account, you can register to take this nonprofit startup assessment. And so what it is, and I, I have, I'll open a new window. I've started one myself um, here. But what it is, is it's an interactive questionnaire where the, the people who sign up for this will go through 75 questions across 10 different topics. And they'll be asked questions about like, what are your goals with this organization? What financial capital do you have? What human capital do you have? Um, there'll be questions about what they know about program development, or if the person has done market analysis to see what other nonprofits are in the area. Um, ask them about their nonprofit knowledge. As you can see, it's pretty comprehensive. So after answering all of these 75 questions, the person will get kind of a diagnostic tool. And I'll click on to here to kind of show you what it looks like. So on the left-hand side, you'll see all of those 10 categories where the person answered questions. And they'll each get color-coded. Red means that the person needs more work in that area. Yellow means they're pretty good, but can use a little bit more work. And green means you're on track and, and you've got everything down. Now, you don't see any um, color codes here because this is uh, my assessment that I really didn't start. I just kind of opened it up to start it so you don't see the, the color codes here. But you'll have to trust me um, that that's what it's going to do for the person. The person could also download their report if they want to have a takeaway uh, to, to look at, at their results and um, to either email it to somebody or print it out if they want to. Um, but it's just a great way for people to assess their readiness. Um, and, it, and on the way, when the, the questions kind of prompt them to think about all of the things that they're going to need to know um, to run a successful nonprofit. So that's really invaluable um, to help people uh, get going before they actually get going and, and tell, teach them what they need to learn more about uh, before they finalize the process. So that's our nonprofit assessment tool. The next thing I wanna show you is our resources by region. And here it's really cool. We have state specific uh, resources um, that you can go to. And to start, you just click on a specific state and I'm located in Ohio. So I usually start with that one. So you click on the state where you wanna see the resources for. And here you'll see for the state, there's five different tabs that you can kind of search. And the most frequently tabbed use that I tend to use on my work with the online librarian is the Startup Guides tab, which is the one on the far right. And what's in the Startup Guides tab are really 
step-by-step -step resources to starting a nonprofit. And when I say step-by-step, -step, I mean literally step one, go to this website and register, and here's the price. Step two, fill out this form on this website, and you get the idea. And I find that most people, when they come to us and they want help on how to start a nonprofit, they don't want just general overview like, yeah, you should do this. They literally want step by step, let me check this off and then go from there. So we have these for every state and it, they're really helpful and people are so grateful when you send them these links. So definitely check those out if you need some startup guides. Um, we also list state agencies and nonprofit associations for the specific state. Another tab that I tend to use a lot is this legal resources tab. And you probably know if you get a lot of questions about starting a nonprofit, most people need some kind of legal assistance as they're getting started. And not surprisingly, most people can't afford to pay for this. And they're looking for either free or pro bono uh, legal resources. So what we've done here is we've compiled all of our legal resources by state. So somebody can come here, and, and if you're in Ohio, you can find different sources of like free legal clinics or bar association resources or pro bono legal help. People also are very grateful for this one too, because again, it, obviously legal, um, legal work is very expensive. And so anything that can help, uh, help with that is appreciated. There's also a tab here for management and technical assistance providers. And what's in this tab are nonprofits or community organizations that provide some kind of resources to nonprofits, whether it's training, whether it's um, like volunteer mentoring services, um, really anything, any types of organizations that we know of where they'll provide some kind of assistance for nonprofits. Um, so that's really the nonprofit um, startup resources. And that about wraps that up. I am going to now kick it over to Christy, and she's going to show you three more cool resources. Hi, everyone. I'm Christy Rillette, part of the online librarian team at Candid. I'm going to spend a few minutes today going over three key resources on Candid Learning, our knowledge base articles, sample documents, and our ebook collection. One of the things about being an online librarian is uh, we get questions from all over the world, uh, from nonprofits, those who want to start a nonprofit, funders, uh, individual grant seekers uh, that are students or people with, that need uh, emergency financial resources due to hardship. So our questions you know, are diverse and wide. And one of the great things about Candid Learning is there are a ton of resources to help answer those questions, but sometimes it's hard to find them on uh, such a uh, deep uh, website. So, I'm here to point out some things that we use often to answer those questions. Um, I'm going to start with the knowledge base in Candid Learning because when we get a stumper uh, or if we just want to answer basic general questions about fundraising, uh, nonprofit management, et cetera, the knowledge base is always kind of our go-to where we start. And so the knowledge base, as well as the other two resources that I'm going to talk about today, are on this uh, tab up here, resources. And if you put your cursor over it, you're going to go down and click on the knowledge base right here. So these articles began as a tool to help our online librarians answer common questions, uh, but they've grown and developed into a resource that we share with everyone, uh, you know, that people can access anytime, uh, self-service, and search themselves or, you know, as we're always happy to do, point them in the right direction and maybe help them find the answers uh, that they're looking for. We have 
about 250 answers to our most frequently asked questions now. And even over 60 of those articles are in Spanish. So there is a breadth and uh, a depth to this, uh, this knowledge base, uh, but we have a couple of ways to help you find what you're looking for. So just you know, think of it as the Google of candid learning. You can find your answers by keyword. Uh, you can put in something as specific as say like bylaws and enter that search and you'll see we have five things where that keyword comes up and here's your you know, general, general one that's gonna answer what they are, where can I find samples, et cetera. And what you'll see when you look at any of these um, is all of these knowledge base articles kind of follow the same format and have the same elements in them. So first it's going to answer kind of the basics of you know, the question. So in this case, it's gonna say like, this is what bylaws are, what's contained in them, where, you know, if they're public documents, et cetera. And then if there's any internal, if there's links, we'll, and, you know, to other resources, we'll put them in the article itself. And as I mentioned before, there are Spanish uh, language articles as well. You can, if there's a Spanish version, you'll see it right here on, on the article and just click into that if, um, if that's, helpful to your users. If you scroll on down, if we have, you know, any relevant training that's connected to the topic, um, we will put that in the article as well as all the way down, we always have staff recommended websites. And these are things that, you know, other good like either blogs or nonprofit resources that are online that are, are relevant to the topic. And depending on on the, uh, the topic or the article itself, you will sometimes see uh, books that are recommended as well. And I'll show you one of those as uh, we go into a, a different article and see what that looks like. So if I go back to our knowledge base up here, like I said, we can search by keyword. The other thing that you'll see um, is that you can search by topic. So if you click on this, you'll see that we have you know, broad topic areas like fundraising, management, resources for funders specifically, starting nonprofits, support for individual grant seekers. If you click on any of these plus signs, you're going to get kind of those sub topics, uh, narrow things uh, for like artists, personal needs, students. And when you click on those, you'll get just those uh, frequently asked questions for students and researchers. For instance, you know, we get a lot about like financial aid for, you know, scholarships, looking, students looking for that. How can they find funding? Graduate students, uh, even, you know, fellowships for international students. So you could specifically search just on those topics here. I'm gonna go ahead and clear this. So we're back to this, our full list. One thing that you'll also notice about the knowledge base is that the default sort is by popularity. So uh, what you're gonna get is our most frequently read articles are gonna appear at the top of any results list. Um, so, you know, looking at this list here of all of our articles, you know, it's not surprising that our articles on emergency financial resources to help with COVID-19 hardships right here, um, and how do I start a nonprofit organization if you're at the very top? Uh, we keep, um, you know, sharing and trying to point people in the right direction, but this has obviously been a very, uh, you know, trying time for a lot of people, for nonprofits. And if you haven't seen this resource already, it is um, very helpful about just like getting for both nonprofits individuals, artists, small businesses, and we have some links as well to international aid, just getting those basic um, resources that are out there for funding uh, for emergency uh, COVID related uh, for all of these audiences. So that I wanted to point out as well. Um, like I mentioned, you know, some of these, these questions are going to, um, 
are going to be answering more general questions, you know, questions such as like, how do I write a grant proposal or how do I start a nonprofit organization? But you're also going to find things to specific questions uh, like how long should nonprofit organizations retain business related records? So like I said, it runs the gamut and it's always one of the things that I'm always surprised by is where, where it's going to lead me. And that's, that's the coolest thing to me about the knowledge base is because it, it connects you to not just the knowledge or the answers uh, to these common questions that people in the social sector may have, uh, but that it's gonna also connect you to the training and other resources or blog posts or eBooks or websites. I kind of you know, see this as kind of the, the, the center of all of the, the spokes on the wheel. So if you don't, you know, remember one thing about, you know, or if you can remember, let's try that. If you can remember one thing about Candid Learning website, remember the knowledge base because it's where the online librarians go when we don't know the answer and when we want to get started on a subject, it's always helpful. So I am going to move on now uh, to our second resource that we're going to highlight. Our sample documents can also be easily accessed from that resources tab where we started with. If you scroll down to underneath knowledge base and click on sample documents, you'll see that they are divided by tabs here under cover letters, letters of inquiry, letter proposals, proposal budgets, as well as full proposals. Um, one of the hardest things to find is real life examples of grant proposals that have been successful at securing grants. Um, there are several reasons for this. Uh, sometimes the funder and the applicant may be protective of these documents. Also, they are usually very specific to the project, the organization, and funder. But uh, we have a past publication that is really cool uh, where we have extracted those sample proposals. Uh, the book was called The Grant Seeker's Guide to Winning Proposals. And those now appear for free to access on Candid Learning. Um, so when you go here, you can look at, you know, if you want the full proposal, you can go there. But you can also see, like I said, LOIs or cover letters or just budgets, whatever you're looking for. Um, the proposals themselves, when you click on this section, and it's going to give you a brief description of what it was, and you'll see for all the other categories as well. If we have the subject and or the public, um, it's, sorry, the population group uh, that the, the project or program was serving, uh, you'll see that here. So it gives you a little bit of context to what the grant uh, proposal was for. Uh, and then if you click on these, for the full proposal, you'll also see that it includes uh, some feedback comments from the decision makers who, who gave uh, the nonprofit um, who funded, funded the grant. So that's always super helpful to not only just see the, the, the proposal that the nonprofit submitted, but also knowing and seeing what the funder thought of the proposal uh, and their, their feedback is really valuable as well. So you'll see on any of these documents, when you click into them, you're gonna see this, you know, download the sample document. And right here, because I'm not logged in to Candid Learning, it's gonna prompt me to do so. So Candid Learning accounts are free. We, uh, you don't need anything to access the knowledge base uh, on, Candid Learning, but for to sign up for training and also to download these um, sample documents, you do need to have a free Candid Learning account. So I happen to have one. If not, people are prompted to join now, but I'm going to go ahead and log in so you can see how that changes. Now, once I'm logged into Candid Learning, I get the download button and that's going to automatically pull up 
the full PDF. This has got the cover sheet. It's going to go into the abstract. It's got all the pieces, you know, including the budget, et cetera, and the layout of what this proposal was. And once you've access one of these documents. If I went back, I'm going to go to the full sample documents here. But if I you know, wanted to look at a different one, like this letter of inquiry, once I've logged in once, I'm just going to download the PDFs after that. So it's very easy. And now my final uh, candid learning resource to highlight is our ebook collection. Um, candid learning is the primary ch channel to find our overdrive collection as well. You can go back to this tab and go to borrow ebooks, or as you can see, you can go straight to the uh, website candid.overdrive.com. And um, this is one of the rare uh, and cool features that. Uh, is one of my favorite things that we have. Um, as we transitioned away from our direct library services at our regional locations a few years ago, we still wanted to provide our audience with a way to freely access important knowledge about the nonprofit sector. So we have a growing digital collection of eBooks and audiobooks on social sector and philanthropy related topics. And it's curated by Candid's librarians, uh, like me, like Melissa. Uh, and uh, this free public collection is available to anyone through Overdrive. Um, some of you may be familiar with Overdrive. It's used by many public libraries. Um, and so you can access these titles remotely from any computer, smartphone, tablet, e-reader. Um, and that to me is is one of the the greatest things uh, about um, that free access to anyone when when they need that information. Um, so, like I said, once you come to the site, uh, you can search it. Uh, you will have to to create an account um, that's different than your Candid Learning account. Uh, if you click on sign in or you actually look at, you know, click on any of the titles, it's going to prompt you or if you try to check one out. But once you hit sign in or to try to check out anything out, you're going to click on this user ID help. And what we ask is you have to put in your, you know, your name, basic, you know, if it's required, basic contact information and then you're going to get an email. That email is going to give you a user ID. And so we want to make sure that you write it down because you're going to need to use it every time you log in. Once you've got that, you can start borrowing, place holds, and you're good to go. I'm going to go back here and we're going to look at the collection just so you can kind of see what, what we've got here. Um, it's a really unique collection. It's, specifically focused, you know, on, on the sector. Um, we have curated, like I said, collections on nonprofit management, proposal writing, strategic planning, um, with an extensive uh, collection on actually diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, that we got a special grant and we have really, you know, bulked up this, this section has been really, really exciting. Um, the, one of the things that you can also look at, you know, besides just the collections, you can search it by, you know, keyword, just like you would anything else. If you're looking for a title and you don't have it, um, you know, for instance, if I put in something maybe about NGOs and I'm going to see some of the things that we have, you know, global best, best practices for, for NGOs, et cetera, that's available. You can click straight on this title, you can see borrow, look more about it. If it wasn't, you could put it on hold. Uh, but down here, if there's, you know, this one is, looks like it's a fiction book, but you know, if there's a puppy book, who knows? But if you can always recommend something that we don't own, if it's available on Overdrive, 
it's going to come to us and we, you know, take those recommendations very, um, you know, we get very enthusiastic when people get interested in the collection and find things that they want to add to it as well. Um, one of the things besides, like I said, the, the different categories that you can see, if you just wanted to see all the audio books you can do there, to date we have 341 ebook titles and 86 audio book titles. Like I said, there you can listen on the go. You know, I don't know if everybody's still commuting. If you are, if you just take walks around, you know, the neighborhood between meetings, you can pop in one of those titles, listen to it, learn what you need from it. You know, it's it's super exciting to me that we have this really like exciting living collection of books and you know things that are going to help people you know at the moment that they need the information so just you know get yourself your user id share it with your your communities and tell us how we can make the collection better and with that i'm going to hand it back to melissa thanks a lot Thanks, Christy. Now we'll wrap up our presentation by telling you a little bit more about Candid's online librarian service. So for those of you that aren't familiar with who we are and what we do, we provide free virtual reference services via chat and email. And we help anyone with questions about Candid, Candid's trainings, philanthropy, nonprofit management, the social sector, you don't need to be affiliated with a nonprofit organization. We'll help anyone who has a question about those topics. So we're always happy to help, especially our fins. And what that means is if you have a, a patron or a visitor that has a question that you don't know the answer to, please feel free to send them our way. Also, if you yourself have a question or maybe you just need to uh, bounce an idea or, or look for some additional resources on a topic, just send us a message and we'll be happy to provide you with any kind of uh, resources that we have on the topic. We're a small but mighty team. There's four of us. You've already heard from me and Christy today. Uh, but we have two other people on our team, Katie and Em. And I just wanted to to show you our faces so you could put a face to the name in case you ever reach out to us and to show you that we are in fact a very helpful looking group of people. So to give you an idea about the scope of our service of how many people we help, we help a lot. We had a very busy 2020. Um, we answered over 21,000 uh, questions last year almost 16,000 emails and uh, 5,500 chats. So I will say that we did have a big COVID bump last year. As you can imagine, there were a lot of people that wanted to learn more about any kind of COVID relief grants. So we did see a huge uptick in questions. Um, but yes, we were very busy last year. But there are three ways for you to contact us, um, and all of them are on Candid Learning. So if you go to the Candid Learning site, again, the URL is learning.candid.org. Um, on the top navigation bars that I showed you earlier in the presentation today, there is a link to Ask Us, which I've put a red box on here on this slide. Um, if you click on that, you'll get to the online librarians page and th there will be a, um, a link where you can click to submit a question to us. There's also a, a pop up button on every page on Candid Learning that's in the bottom right corner that I've also put a red a box around down here. So if uh, we do have chat available, the button will say chat now. And if it's after our chat hours, it'll say contact us, but you could still click there to submit an email. So just so you know, for our chat hours are uh, Monday through Friday, 9.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. So normal business hours on the East Coast time. But email can be sent to us 24 seven, and we typically respond to our customers um, in one to two business days. 
Now I will say we do prioritize questions from our FINS. So if you contact us, please be sure to identify yourself or send it from your um, work email account so that we know that you're, uh, you're um, affiliated with a FIN. And then we'll typically get back to you within a couple of hours um, or a day at the latest. So another way you can reach us is you can also email us directly at onlinelibrarian at candid.org. So that wraps up our presentation today. And we're gonna spend some time on some questions. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and we're gonna go live and uh, answer any questions that you have for us. Thank you.